Gucci. Today we are talking about one of my weirdly favorite topics in Agile, which is velocity. And that's an odd thing to say. But the reason why is because I think people think they know what velocity is, but they're not entirely correct. And I think a lot of people use it as a success metric for teams. And I just don't agree with that at all. I think there are a lot of things that you could glean from velocity when you look at it and when you ask questions, but I've seen it used to browbeat their teams or to tell teams that they're not being productive enough. And I'm really curious, Lucci and Ben, where you've seen velocity being used and what in your experience have you seen and the way people have either misunderstood, misused, or or maybe there was one team that just nailed it and understood it from the start because it is a little bit of a an odd theory if you are first hearing it. Yeah, I mean, I'll kick off then, Alana. I think, um, first of all, I have almost exclusively seen it used uh, as it isn't meant to be used, at least in part. That, say, another way, like, I don't think I've ever seen it used perfectly. Um, I think you said, have you ever seen teams that get it straight away? Um, I think most teams actually do get it. I don't think it's the teams that introduce the dysfunction. Uh, more often than not, it's actually normally other or other participants. So it could be the product owner, it could be any project management that's surrounding it, or managers that are surrounding the team that tend to corrupt the idea of of, of velocity. So quite often, teams naturally understand it, but um, I don't think I've seen many teams who get to the point where it is used as uh, as described originally. I think. In my experience, Alana, um, and as Ben has just said, um, most of the teams with, that I've worked uh, with associate velocity with, yes, with a KPI, like an end in itself. Um, it's something that they think they can measure, like as it is only, it's like it doesn't have any other variables or components. Um, and at the same time, this is associated with, okay, we need to do things faster, quicker, uh, and come on, no? Um, and maybe they do not stop and try to understand, okay, what is it now that we understand by this? And how do we like construct this? Um, I don't know, Elena, how you see it, but if it is a mindset or an approach to the way we work, um, but I think it's, as you've said, like it's a KPI that we need to accomplish. Yeah. And, and to, to level set too, because I think even some people are even confused of what velocity is actually measuring. So textbook is that the last three, the average of the last three sprints of how much you completed, that is your velocity. So the amount of story points that you're delivering in those last three, the average of those last three sprints would be what your velocity is. So technically if you're a team that's predictable, you should be able to deliver that number consistently, right? But I think people get confused by when it goes up or down, why does it do that? And people aren't taking into account that even on a very predictable team, your velocity should be going up and down. It's not a measurement of, yes, we can always deliver 30 points because there's going to be holidays, people are going to be out sick. And so you should assume and plan for knowing your velocity is going to go down during those sprints where you might have people out or there might be a holiday. Holiday, or maybe you got a new team member that a lot of time is going towards onboarding the new team member. So you're spending that time getting uh, your new team member up to speed. So of course your velocity is going to go down. Um, and I think what people also often forget is that velocity is tied to the way we're estimating work. So it's not just how much we're getting done. It's also tied to directly how we are sizing the work that we're doing. And so if that changes for whatever reason, that's also going to impact velocity. And it's hard to get teams and leadership to wrap their heads around the reason why we shouldn't freak out about it going up and down. So I'm I'm curious, Ben and Lucci, in your experience, like when you're coaching teams and leadership um, up around this concept, because I do find that I'm met with a lot of anxiety around it. If it goes down, they're freaked out. If it if if they're not able to be consistent, they freak out. And then what it leads to is cooking in the books, essentially, is what I call when you're just 
having your stories or, or splitting your stories at the end of a sprint, saying that work is complete. And then it looks like you're doing the same amount every sprint, but it's not accurate. So I'm curious in your experience, what you've seen and what, how you would coach teams on, on this area. Yeah. I mean, I think it's very common that you, you, you see what the behaviors you've described, Alana. I think it, it, for me, like there's two sides. There's there's one with the team and it's helping the, well, actually it, this applies to both sides, team and external. So when I say external, I mean product owner or manager or, or whatever. Um, so it's like, okay, fundamentally, what are we trying to achieve with this? Um, and, and also reminding people that the that our, our domain in which we work is inherently variable, right? We're not building cars. We're not putting, you know, a piece with another piece, which we've done a hundred thousand times before, and we can scientifically manage that and, and be, um, you know, we've got standard errors of, of deviation, like Six Sigma and things like that. But that's not the domain we work in. So we will always have differences in the amount of work in in our estimation so reminding people that we should expect variation as you said alana is very important but also helping people understand what the what the measure is for and and trying to stay as much as possible um true to that and then if there are other needs from other stakeholders how can we satisfy that not with you know not necessarily with velocity and to make that real i mean okay so velocity is help us manage how much we can do in this sprint and Maybe we can even project forwards and say, how much can we do in the next two months or how long is it going to take to finish this body of work? If there are people from outside of the team or in the team that want something else, which is how do I know how hard the team is working or how do I know how efficient they are or how do I know uh, how much value we're deriving? Those are all valid questions maybe in your domain, but to, to assume that that goes down to velocity or to corrupt the idea of velocity um but with those concepts um uh, is not useful so i'd work with them and th say okay look what is it what is it that would help you understand whether we are delivering valuable software it might be seeing a kpi move or it might be asking a customer how happy they are or it might be another thing and maybe it isn't velocity so yeah that's that's kind of my approach i don't know what you think luci um, I was thinking about asking a question to you, Elena. Um, I don't know if that's correct, but um, have you ever thought about um, reaching like an average uh, velocity? Like, like as there are adjustments or that maybe you're going to be slower or faster, or I don't know what terms you use, but to like identify, okay, let's define an, uh, an average number so that they are more like comfortable with that and they don't feel like okay now we are uh we need to hurry up maybe they we are okay no like okay we are okay maybe the with the sprint we it took longer than we expected but then we are okay because we have we've met the average number i am just thinking out loud interesting so so saying um if let's say the team is like the average should be 30 but let's say they deliver 25, they're not freaked out because it's just an average. It doesn't mean they have to hit 30 on the dot, but if they hit a little lower or a little bit more, then then we shouldn't freak out. It's more of a conversation of, of why. Yeah, I, actually, it, I, it, I don't know. Literally, I mean, it raises a really good point, which is like, why don't we use a range? Instead of saying our velocity is 30 points, why don't yeah. we start using to like a... a, a a kind of a, a verbalization that our our velocity is between 28 and 32 why don't we why don't we all say that why don't we say to our product owners that and this is what you can expect between 28 and 32 maybe that using a range would help people get a little bit more comfortable with the fact that it is variable and the fact that it is you know not completely predictable I love that idea, but it's funny to me because velocity is exactly the average. It is exactly, it's baked into like what we talk about, but I think people or teams that want to deliver and a and, uh, business that wants to be able to deliver to stakeholders, they get so fixated on this one number. Like it has to be 32. Well, I know, Forgetting I mean, it's an average of the numbers they've delivered. Well, the reason is, that I can tell you from experience, the reason that people don't like the range and prefer to to have a number is because they can't do they can't do mathematics on a range right they can't extrapolate forwards they can't tell you like how the average number of story points they can't tell you 
you know, because they're they're baffled. Do I use 28 or do I use 32? Like it just doesn't work. But but at the same time, it does exactly what we need it to do, which it, it stops people trying to do those maths. So yeah. I, I think it's, you know, it, it's maybe a fundamental to to say to protect the concept of velocity if we start giving ranges. That's very interesting, Ben. I, I'm going to have to have a think on that because that is an interesting concept. And I'll I'll end with this is that uh, something to keep, keep in mind that's really important that people often forget as well is that a velocity for one team may be very different for the velocity of another team. One might deliver 100 points in a sprint. Another might deliver 30 points in the sprint. It does not mean that that one team is more productive or they are more efficient at all. It just means the way they're estimating work just happens to be different than the way the other team is estimating work. So again, Ben, to your point, understanding how are teams uh, delivering value? What, how do you know if they're being effective or if they're being productive? It's not necessarily all on velocity, but velocity is what I think of as a diagnostic tool to ask questions. Why is it going up? Why is it going down? And so that we can understand what impacts our velocity so we're better at planning around it when those things happen. Like say when when people are out sick or for holidays or when we get a new team member or the, all of those things, plus many others can impact velocity. So if I were to give one piece of advice to take away from that is don't hold it too close and use it as a measurement for the health of the team and, and to ask more questions about what's going on. Um, Cause it's telling you something. It's not, it's not a bad thing or a good thing. It's just telling you information that you should investigate. Um, and with that, I think we're all done here with Velocity. Thank you guys so much for chatting, Ben and Lucci. This was a pleasure. A lot of interesting stuff. Would love to know what you all watching think. Please let us know in the comments below. Feel free to reach out and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Bye.